formations uh, by use of color doppler vascular anomalies are quite uh, common in uh, especially in infants and children and unfortunately they are again most confusing and misunderstood ones because of the history of inconsistent terminology used for the classification over the years so the international society for the study of vascular anomalies they have postulated a classification in 2014 and that was updated in 2018 they have divided malformations considering their hemodynamic and the morphological characteristics into high flow and low flow one and then they narrow down uh, division distinction between simple and, uh, simple and the complex ones so all malformations with arterial component in their morphology are classified as high flow malformations there may be av communication may not be there this is the uh, classification of this one one part is vascular tumors and vascular malformations can be simple combined with major name vessels with other anomalies the simple ones they include capillary lymphatic venous av malformations and av fistulas so we as a radiologists are more concerned with this they are common also and they commonly come to us again vascular tumors like hemangiomas we tend to evaluate at uh, various situations they can be combined uh, capillary venous and all combinations are possible then they are associated sometimes with certain syndromes then that should be taken uh, into consideration after evaluation and furthermore they are further they are more uh, classified like vascular tumors into benign and uh, locally aggressive and malignant lymphatic into common lymphatic macro microcystic and other then which syndromes there is a long list so uh, though, though the theory is quite uh, ex- exhaustive and extensive a practical uh, approach for us is 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 uh, very simple so what you do you basically uh, use the ultrasound as a diagnostic tool and being a first imaging um, examination with for this patient you do the b mode characteristics locate the anomaly look for its size its morphology how it the appearance is we do the real time imaging for characterizing the flow velocity within the malformation same uh, ultrasound and doppler can be used for percutaneous sclerotherapy and again monitor the patients for as a follow up after they undergo embolization or other procedures so uh, disadvantages yes some there are disadvantages in form of lack of precision in the deep lesions and dependency on the experience of the person who is doing the examination this is a algorithm uh, given in a rsn article if you see flow in the in a lesion then you try to look whether it is a arterial flow if it is a arterial flow along with a mass then it you consider this as a vascular tumor this includes all hemangiomas or this could be other soft tissue tumor also if there is arterial flow uh, but there is no mass then that comes under the high vascular uh, high flow vascular malformation this includes avms also uh, if uh, there is a flow but this is not arterial flow and there are flebolith then this is a uh, pathognomic of a venous malformation but there is no arterial flow no flebolith then it is a low flow vascular malformation this again includes vascular malformation before appearance of flebo there could be other soft tissue tumors so this lesion can be considered as a lymphatic malformation or it can be other cystic lesion also so this is a broad algorithm for evaluation by doppler certain doppler parameters and ultrasound parameters the venous malformations they appear like ecogenic masses they can have flebolis they are multi spatial in between planes they are compressible but doppler will show monophasic and low vascular low flow pattern in lymphatic similar appearance can be there but there will be no flow in them or except in the septa whereas high flow uh, malformations including avms and fistulas there will be cluster of vessels with defined no intervening mass and there can be arterial and venous signals from the vessels within the lesion there can be or can may not be arterialization of venous channels or av communications the example of a low flow uh, malformation this is a capillary uh, hemangioma imaging is not usually necessary if you do uh, ultrasound you may uh, see very minimal signal abnormality and uh, in case you see this uh, such hemangiomas the cns involvement 
uh, may be evaluated uh, to look for Sturge Weber syndrome. Lymphatic malformations, they appear cystic with septations. Uh, they, they can assume large sizes, but they are soft and compressible. The macrocystic, they, uh, they show as cystic species with septation and uh, an ultrasound uh, is adequate to define whether the, what is the plane, whether it is in subcute plane. Usually they are in the subcute plane, that is why they appear as swellings. And uh, many, sometimes MRI with contrast is uh, done to define the anatomic extent where they are extending here and there. But ultrasound is quite diagnostic in diagnosing of lymphatic malformations. When a small formation, if on X-ray you find flaboliths, it is pathognomic. But if, if it is not seen on, an, they are, on ultrasound, they appear as a, a discoloration uh, in the area uh, involved, uh, bluish or greenish discoloration. And then they are on ultrasound, they appear as a hypoechoic uh, and channels or anechoic channels, tubular ones. Flaboliths can be seen uh, the, on ultrasound also as small ecogenic like calculi. They may show posterior acoustic shadowing, smaller ones may not show. They are again compressible when they are superficial and Doppler will show uh, monophasic flow. So sometimes the flow may not be demonstrated but you see fine movements in the internal echoes that is very sl uh, that is slower than the detectable flow by the Doppler but still you can make that diagnosis. So this is an example of a lesion showing multiple anechoic tubular channels and there is a large uh, channel draining probably draining this uh, lesion and that shows a venous type of flow coming to high flow uh, vascular lesions they are stable and slow growing against the uh, hemangiomas they tend to involute uh, clinically they may present with focal gigantism or limb lengthening in case of uh, very large avms they uh, pulsatile uh, if you palpate them you can feel the pulsations of the uh, hypertrophied arteries there is many times thickening of the skin and edema. They occur in CNS, in pelvis, in uterus, head neck region and lower limbs also. So neck, lower limbs, uterus, we can evaluate on color Doppler. So Doppler gives us real time information. What it gives? Because of increased vascularity, the flow, uh, the, uh, the resistance within the lesion, resistance to blood flow reduces. As the resistance reduces, you will see increase in the flow systolic as well as diastolic so the feeding artery will show a pattern like a renal artery or a, a internal carotid artery good systolic as well as good diastolic flow then there may be turbulence there may not be turbulence that depends on the AV communications if the arterial flow is increased definitely the venous drainage will increase and the veins will dilate they may not show phasic flow they may show continuous flow increased flow also and if there is communication they may show a uh, arterialization of flow. That is a characteristic finding of a AVM that has in tortuous and enlarged vascular channels with dilated draining vein showing the arterialization of flow. We will see some examples and usually there is no soft tissue mass. And point of AV communication can be uh, localized very well on ultrasound. You adjust the findings, uh, find uh, the settings to find the area of aliasing and point your sample volume there and uh, increase the PRF so that you see that AV communication nicely. So this is a small lesion over scalp lesion, scalp came to the plastic surgeon, he wanted to excise but he just felt it is warm so he uh, uh, advised ultrasound and Doppler and on Doppler you can see it's all filled with uh, color and uh, the artery within the lesion shows quite good amount of systolic and uh, diastolic component. It is in the uh, uh, mid. It was almost in the midline, the forehead, and the supraorbital artery. You can see that is feeding that uh, vascular lesion. Also shows increased systolic and uh, diastolic flow. Uh, we thought this is a, a point of communication, but there was no turbulence, and the systolic to diastolic difference was quite significant. But though there is no AV communication, this is a high flow vascular uh, malformation. Another lesion, this is was on the scalp behind pinna. Again, lesion showing uh, multiple anechoic tubular lesions, all filled with color on color Doppler, and the arterial flow is significantly increased. Then, uh, this is a lesion, uh, in peripheral lesion. You can see there are uh, only channels, there is no mass as such. There are multiple channels showing varying flow, 
and the PRF now has been increased. Still, you can see that there is aliasing at multiple places, and that these are the areas you should target for looking for the uh, AV communication. The feeding artery that shows significantly increased systolic as well as diastolic flow here. You can see it in real time that the systolic diastolic flow is enormous, grossly increased, and this at this is at the site of um, aliasing what we could see see the prf prf was 14 prf here is 41 still you see very highly increased flow more than 180 centimeters more than 120 centimeters diastolic and this is the turbulence this is the turbulence of av communication this is feathery appearance of the spectrum that you should always look for whenever you uh, look for the av communication and the draining vein shows the arterialization of flow there is loss of physicity that there is no continu there is a continuous flow but it has attained the arterial uh, wave waveform this is similar to the flow by c in umbilical vein in uh, very severe um, uh, ischemic changes another example in uh, forearm a small lesion again patient came from plastic surgeon he uh, he could feel the pulsatility and then he advised ultrasound it was sitting above this radial artery on doppler all is filled with color you can see the aliasing at multiple places and doppler at the uh, uh, aliasing shows very high systolic as well as diastolic component the radial artery feeding this also shows continuous uh, systolic and diastolic flow triphacity is gone there uh, flow volume is increased and uh, uh, cephalic vein shows the arterialization of flow so these are all characteristics of uh, AV communication. This patient is uh, came to our department. We could see only multiple channels in the region of uterus on B mode on uh, color. There is a lot of color pickup in the myometrial region on transfer section. Even the uterine artery shows aliasing, and uh, there is, there are too many vessels in the mostly in the anterior myometrium some are seen up to the endometrium after increasing the prf from 11 to 46 or there are some points of aliasing though the other vessels do not appear but that means there is a high flow here and then you should sample those high flow areas so we seen this on color doppler you can see multiple vessels they are going from right from fundus to the cervical region and it's all full with there is no mass as such but you can see n number of uh, vessels there so this is the arterial flow that was uh, showing increased systolic as well as diastolic flow and then this is again uh, color showing in transverse that again increased uh, systolic as well as diastolic uh, sorry increased color pickup this was probably the uh, site of communication showing uh, more uh, there is no significant difference in the systolic and diastolic there is some turbulence some feathery appearance there and this was the uh, sampled at the aliasing uh, area the artery the vein uh, uterine vein that shows here is uh, arterialization of flow this is uh, this is again uh, arterialization of flow so these are all characteristics of uh, malformations treatment uh, surgical treatment when is, uh, in small or superficial even can be done but interventional radiology has come up in a great way here uh, helping the patients and the clinicians getting embolizations you can do repeated embolization in case it is not possible to embolize in one way there are various methods available embolizing materials coils uh, sclerotherapy but they, they have uh, proven to be a great help in treating this syndrome. then AV fistulas are a type of AV communications where there is direct communication in between uh, artery and vein usually it is uh, made for dialysis or sometimes in iatrogenic cases you get uh, post traumatic av fistulas and all so as there is a communication between vein and artery directly the there is no resistance to the flow across the lesion, uh, across the communication and you see very high systolic and diastolic uh, flow again same features like artery showing increased flow then the vein showing arterialization flow they do come we have a case today we will uh, show you how it looks uh, a few words about vascular tumors the hemangiomas they uh, they appear after birth 
and the, the two types they either involute by one year or uh, five year some are rapidly involuting they involute by one year the non involuting they, they reduce in size by five years whereas vascular malformations as they are hungry for the blood they get blood and they increase their size so they, they stably grow over the years the hemangiomas are uh, benign vascular neoplasms again present in infancy and clinically appear as a superficial lesions they have the classical many a time strawberry uh, birthmark and they can be found in internal organs also and there is definite tendency for involution this is a mass hypoechoic mass lesion over the scalp a child uh, and you can see on doppler it is uh, quite vascular multiple vein cells are seen but there is a mass it's not like vascular malformation where you don't see a mass total uh, there is a bunch of vessels only and on doppler uh, spectral doppler you see increase systolic and diastolic flow the vein shows increased flow but it doesn't show arterialization of flow it is a routine venous type of flow so that's how we differentiate parotid hemangiomas are quite common they are seen at the age of 4 months and above and they uh, the the parotid mass enlarges and on we'll see the uh, example directly this is a grossly enlarged parotid gland and you can see multiple uh, enlarged vessels there within the gland and on doppler it's all full of color multiple vessels are seen many at many places there is aliasing but after increasing the prf aliasing at reduced to a certain extent and the artery you can see the increase and in systolic as well as diastolic flow and the vein shows increased flow but there is no arterialization so mass increase uh, systo- uh, arterial supply the increase venous flow no av communication so this is a uh, high flow uh, vascular malformation but this is a tumor so we call it as an hemangioma sometimes internal organs they do have hemangiomas this was a case uh, of a child having multiple hypoechoic uh, lesions in the liver they were not picking up uh, much color intervening uh, tissue showed uh, uh, vascular supply has vascular uh, areas but uh, these uh, again uh, labeled this was uh, biopsied and was proved to be hemangioendothelioma and uh, slowly after few years they we show regression in size also and size significantly they have been faded away and this patient was in follow up for almost 10 years and now he has grown into adult and is uh, shows has shows a normal liver that's how they go uh, in the so uh, our take home message in uh, evaluation of uh, vascular malformations it uh, doppler is very much useful in evaluation characterization decision making and follow up of these lesions if you follow this algorithm then you can uh, go to uh, diagnosis of most of them so uh, with this we uh, finish this presentation and we have some cases that we will see uh, in a short while thank you उसका कौन से ओके सो जाओ किसी को बुला रहे खाली सर कौन सर कौन सा खाली